20th. Welcome to your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski with the latest local news, including shots fired in a road rage, road, road rage incident sorry, on Route 8, and more than 103 underage drinkers busted at a Norwalk bar last night, and much more. Now, Kevin Coleman is in for Frank Granito with your forecast and later on a Nutmeg Sports Update. But first, Norwalk police have arrested a West Haven man in connection to a murder that happened last summer. Now, on July 9th, 2017 at 11 in the morning, Norwalk police responded to a report of a shooting on Plymouth Avenue. Now, arriving officers located a male victim near the roadway suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Now, the suspect had fled the scene prior to that officer's arrival. That person was transported to Norwalk Hospital by ambulance with serious injuries. Now, Norwalk detectives began their investigation and quickly established Markel Middleton, 24 years old, as a person of interest. Now, detectives who led the investigation secured a warrant for Middleton arrest. Middleton was arrested in Milford on April 19th with the assistance of the Milford Police Department and the Office of Adult Probation Detectives. Now, police lauded the public for their assistance in that investigation. His bond was set at $500,000. And in other news, a road rage incident on Route 8 Tuesday led to shots being fired. On April 17th at about 8.15 at night, troopers started an investigation into a road rage incident that occurred on Route 8 North near Exit 27 in Naugatuck. Now, upon speaking with the victim, it was determined that the unidentified operator of a pickup truck fired several shots at the victim's vehicle before exiting Route 8 northbound via the Exit 27 off-ramp. Now, the suspected vehicle was described as a dark green pickup truck with white trim, a ladder rack, and a yellow plow. Now, no injuries were reported, but anyone with information or who thinks they may have any information regarding that truck or the person involved can contact state troopers at 203-393-4200. And state police in Hartford are looking for information following a fatal pedestrian versus tractor trailer accident. Now, on April 19th, at about 6.48 p.m., troopers from Troop H in Hartford responded to I-91 southbound near the exit 35 in Windsor. Now, upon arrival, troopers found a juvenile female pedestrian suffering from life-threatening injuries after being struck by a tractor trailer. Now, that pedestrian was transported to Hartford Hospital, where she was later pronounced dead. Now, Anyone who thinks they may have witnessed the crash or may have seen the pedestrian on I-91 prior to that incident can contact troopers in Hartford at 860-534-1000. And in other news, more than 100 underage drinkers, many Fairfield University students, were found in a Norwalk bar Thursday night. Now, on April 19th, shortly after 11.30 p.m., the Norwalk Special Services Division and agents from the State Liquor Control Commission arrived at Johnny Utah's, located on 80 Washington Street, and found numerous underage people within the establishment. Now, due to the large volume of people, numerous patrol division officers were summoned to the scene to assist. Now, investigators found 103 underage people in that bar, including 93 that were Fairfield University students. Well, investigators noted that many of the underage persons were intoxicated and most did not possess any type of ID. Now, ECS transportation were called to the scene, along with Fairfield University Public Safety, to assist with the removal and transport of those students back to Fairfield University. Now, no arrests have been made at this time. However, the investigation remains ongoing. And in other news, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has issued a warning urging people who bought chopped romaine lettuce to throw it away immediately because it could make them sick. Now, the CDC said Wednesday that a nationwide E. coli outbreak was linked to romaine lettuce from Yuma, Arizona. Now, so far, 53 people in 16 states have been sickened by that lettuce. You can get a lot more on that story at News. But all right, let's throw it over to Kevin Coleman now for a look at your forecast. Kevin. All right. Well, it looks like finally we're going to have some warm weather finally in the in the forecast here. Today, partly cloudy skies, a high near 50 degrees. Look towards tonight, a clear sky, a low of 31. And tomorrow on Saturday, mainly sunny skies, a high of 56. And on Sunday, sunny skies, a high of 58. And we look towards next week as well. Doesn't look like we're going to be in the 40s at all. High 50s and even low 60s, some sunny skies throughout next week. So, Kate, 
some positive news finally coming in Fairfield County. All right going to feel a little bit yes. like spring. All right. Thanks so much, Kevin. You brought the good news with you today. <laughs> we are going to step out for a break. When we come back, Kevin has your Nutmeg Sports update, and we have a lot more local news coming up after this. Spring is in bloom, and so are the deals at Honda of Westport's Dream Garage Spring Event. See and test drive the all-new 2018 Honda Clarity 110 MPG plug-in hybrid sedan. Stop in today and see why we've been named Deal Raiders Dealer of the Year for the fourth year running. Honda of Westport, where peace of mind is part of the deal. Get a fresh start to the new year by shaking up your meal routine. Walter Stewart's Market is your local source for a delicious selection of fresh and convenient salad shakers. Like Southwest Salad with Chicken, Cobb with Organic Chicken, Power Vegan with Fruit and Quinoa, Greek Salad with Tabbouleh, and Grilled Shrimp with Hominy. Grab one from our salad case or order from our deli today. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Dr. Stephen Molinaro and Peter Healy of Family Practice Dentistry and Laser Dental Care have served Ridgefield for over 22 years. Experienced staff offer gentle drillless techniques, preventative care, and cosmetic procedures in a relaxed environment. Grateful for the community's trust and support through the years, new patients and their families are welcome. Call today. I've had Newtown Savings Bank my whole life. You don't have to worry about talking to a machine. You're talking to real people. You're getting real help. I'm banking local and I'm loving it. Welcome back to this Friday edition of your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and it's time to throw it over to Kevin Coleman for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Kevin. Thank you, Kate. We start with some breaking news coming out of Norwalk High School this morning. Head coach Tommy Keyes, the head basketball coach for the boys basketball team at Norwalk High School, has resigned and stepped down from his coaching duties. After giving it much consideration, I have decided to resign from my position as head coach of the boys basketball team at Norwalk High School. It has been a privilege and an honor to lead a story program with such great tradition. Unfortunately, due to other personal and professional goals, I will no longer have the time to continue to commit to the program in the manner that I feel is required from the head coach. And he finished with a letter saying, I look forward to the next chapter in my, in my life in which I plan to spend more time with my family as well as pursue some other professional goals as an educator. And, and for Coach Keys, on behalf of everyone here at the HA Network, we want to wish you and the rest of your family Best of luck in your next chapter of your life. Now we move all over to now to last night. The HA Network was live at Tiger Hollow for boys lacrosse. A little rivalry matchup between the Richfield Tigers and the Wilton Warriors. The Richfield Tigers coming away with a 12-7 victory. Let's take a look at the highlights. It's going to be a tough battle for both, both teams in the faceoff X. We expect we'll see Sweeney in that circle for most of the game. Coach Colsey and the Tigers with a bevy of options to use. They start with Dentrone. You'll also see Muller and on the board first are the Tigers out of the stick of Wes Carpenter. As another draw one here by Sweeney. Finds himself in a pack of Tigers, but somehow able to escape. Nice pass from Scarfy. Big shot off the bounce and we're tied at two. How about Robbie Herman there? Big powerful shot. After winning that faceoff, comes down and rips a shot in the back. There has yet to be an assist in this game, though. A lot of individual efforts early on, which we expect to see a lot of against man-to-man -man defense. How about the effort by Scarfy? Over to Drake, and they're off back. Wow. Right. Slipped through a couple of checks. Pulls back up. Mathis wants to get free for the big shot, and he scores. Yeah, the Tigers three and one on the season as they defeat the Wilton Warriors 12 to seven. And the Richfield Tigers coming away with a 12-7 victory. Reed Kagan leading the way for the Richfield Tigers with four goals. That'll do it for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Kate, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. And in other local news, Waterbury resident 19-year-old Jose Diaz was charged with first-degree larceny for stealing a car in New Canaan last March. Now, on Tuesday, April 17th, New Canaan police traveled to Waterbury Court to take custody of Diaz. Now, back on March 3rd, 2017, police learned that an Audi was stolen from a home on Center Street during the overnight hours. Well, that vehicle was recovered by Connecticut State Police after it was found abandoned on Route 8 in Waterbury. 
Well, the New Canaan Police Investigative Section traveled to retrieve that vehicle, and then they processed it for DNA and fingerprints in October 2017. Now, the state forensic lab confirmed a positive DNA hit with that of Diaz. Well, on Tuesday, police processed Diaz and held him on a $75,000 bond, and he was given a court date of April 18th. And Stratford officials will host a public meeting next week to talk with residents about the planned demolition of the former center school building. Now, officials from the town's Department of Economic Development will host the meeting at 7 p.m. April 25th at the First Congregational Church of Stratford on Main Street. Now, that meeting will include officials from Standard Demolition Services of Trumbull, along with some officials from the Stratford Health and Economic and Community Development Departments, who will answer some questions about the demolition, including the timeline, procedures, procedures, health and safety as well. Now, town council members voted on April 9th to hire standard demolition to raise that former school located on Sutton Avenue. The town will pay standard demolition over $730,000 from part of a Brownfield grant funding obtained two years for remediation and funding. Now, more on that story at StraffordStar.com. And in other Stratford news, Leon Sylvester has seen plenty of things pulled from the waters of the Housatonic River. Now, from paper to plastic to styrofoam, the longtime fisherman and boater becomes sad at how much is pulled from one of Connecticut's most famous waterways. So he and some others concerned about the river's health will gather on Saturday to clean things up in the best way they can. Volunteers in Stratford and Shelton will take to the river on April 21st as part of the annual Housatonic River cleanup. Now this is the 30th year of the cleanup. Once organized by the Trophy Chasers Boat Club, the job is still as hefty and important as before, according to organizers. Now Stratford volunteers will gather at Bird's Eye Street Boat Ramp, while Shelton volunteers will assemble at the Sunnyside Boat Ramp off of River Road. Now those cleanup efforts will run from 8 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. More details at StraffordStar.com. And in other news, people can find unique gifts all while helping one Monroe teenager get closer to finally getting a life-saving diabetic alert dog. Now, Kimberly's Diabetic Alert Dog Campaign Vendor Fair, with all proceeds going directly to the nonprofit organization Service Dogs for Warren Retrievers, will be held this Saturday, April 21st, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at St. Jude's Church on Monroe Turnpike. Now, the benefit, which will feature some 37 vendors from Monroe and surrounding towns, as well as a bake sale and several raffles is to help the Collis family raise money in its quest to adopt a service dog specifically trained to aid their 16-year-old daughter Kimberly, who has type 1 diabetes. Now, at present, the Collis family has raised more than 90% of the money needed to obtain that life-saving dog. The family needs to raise less than $1,000 to finally be able to get the dog. Now, a specially trained dog may be able to provide life-saving support by detecting fluctuating glucose levels a full 30 to 45 minutes before diabetics even feel the effects themselves. More on that event coming up tomorrow at MonroeCourier.com. But we are going to step out for a break. When we come back, we're going to recap some of the top stories we're following today after this. Voted Best Gourmet to Go in Fairfield County, Palmer's extensive menu offers everything you'll need to make your next event easy and delicious. Whether you're hosting a small get-together or planning a large celebration, they've got you covered breakfast through dessert. Order online at palmersdairyand.com or call 203-655-2077.
Want to free up backyard space or are you just sick of looking at your deteriorating pool? Call Gorilla Pool Removal today, the in-ground pool fill-in experts. Pay a fraction of the cost in pool remodel by filling it in with our experienced crew. Available seven days a week by call or text. Find out more at GorillaPoolRemoval.com. Want to free Welcome back to this April 20th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, recapping some of the top stories we're following today. Now, Norwalk police have arrested a West Haven man in connecting to a shooting that happened last summer. Now, on July 9th, 2017, at 11 in the morning, Norwalk police responded to a report of a shooting on Plymouth Avenue. Arriving officers located a male victim near the roadway, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Now, that suspect had fled the scene prior to the officer's arrival. Driving. The victim was transported to Norwalk Hospital by ambulance with serious injuries. Well, Norwalk detectives began their investigation and quickly established 24-year-old Markel Middleton as a person of interest. Detectives who led the investigation secured a warrant for Middleton's arrest, and Middleton was arrested in Milford on April 19th with the assistance of the Milford Police Department and the Office of Adult Probation. Now, detectives allotted the public for their assistance in that investigation. His bond was set at $500,000. And a road rage incident on Route 8 Tuesday led to shots being fired. On April 17th at about 8.15 at night, troopers started to investigate a road rage incident that occurred on Route 8 North near Exit 27 in Naugatuck. Well, upon speaking with the victim, it was determined that the unidentified operator of the pickup truck fired several shots at the victim's vehicle before exiting Route 8 northbound via the Exit 27 off-ramp. Now, that suspect vehicle was described as dark green pickup truck with white trim, a ladder rack, and a yellow plow. Now, thankfully, no injuries were reported, but anyone with information or who thinks they may have any information regarding that truck can contact troopers at 203-393-4200. And state police in Hartford are looking for information following a fatal pedestrian versus tractor trailer accident. Now on April 19th at about 6.50 p.m., troopers from Troop H in Hartford responded to I-91 southbound near exit 35 in Windsor. Well, upon arrival, troopers found a juvenile female pedestrian suffering from life-threatening injuries after being struck by a tractor trailer. Now, the pedestrian was transported to Hartford Hospital, where she was later pronounced dead. Now, anyone who thinks they may have witnessed the crash or seen that pedestrian or that tractor trailer prior to that incident can contact troopers at 860-534-1000. And in other news, more than 100 underage drinkers, many Fairfield University students, were found in a Norwalk bar Thursday night. Now, on April 19th, shortly after 11.30 p.m., the Norwalk Special Services Division and agents from the State Liquor Control Commission arrived at Johnny Utah's at 80 Washington Street and found numerous underage people within that establishment. Now, due to the large volume of people, numerous patrol division officers were summoned to the scene to assist. Now, investigators found 103 underage persons in that bar, including 93 that were Fairfield University students. Now, investigators noted that many of those underage persons were intoxicated and most did not possess any type of ID. Now, ECS Transportation was called to the scene along with Fairfield University Public Safety to assist with the removal and safe transport of those students back to Fairfield U. Now, no arrests have yet been made. However, that investigation remains ongoing. And in other news, the CDC has issued a warning urging people who bought chopped romaine lettuce to throw it away immediately because it could make them sick. Now, the CDC said Wednesday that a nationwide E. coli outbreak was linked to romaine lettuce from Yuma, Arizona. Now, so far, 53 people in 16 states have been sickened by that lettuce. Pennsylvania alone has reported 12 cases of E. coli from tainted lettuce. 10 have been reported in Idaho, and there have also been cases reported in Alaska, Arizona, California, Connecticut, as well as Illinois, Louisiana, Michigan, Missouri, Montana, and the list goes on. But there's a lot more on that reca recall at aspatuck.news. All right, let's throw it back over to Kevin Coleman for a final look at your forecast. Kevin. All right, Kate, so we finally have some warmer weather finally coming into the forecast where it's actually going to feel like spring finally here in April. Today, partly cloudy skies, a high near 50, and tonight, clear skies, a low of 31. Move towards tomorrow and the rest of the weekend, mainly sunny skies on Saturday, a high near 56, and on Sunday, 
mostly sunny skies, a high near 58. And we move towards, we look towards the beginning part of next week, Kate. Looks like we're gonna be in the high 50s to low 60s. So finally, spring is finally here, folks. Back to you, Kate. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. And we are gonna wrap things up here on your coffee break, but we will see you Monday at 11 with the latest local news and more. Have a great weekend.